I stuck that beginning in because what we're going to talk about is reusing composing licks. I used to write a lot of music that would be based around the Romantic era kind of sound and piano concertos like that. And and literally what something literally is when you're doing something like that is a result of studying composers, borrowing their composing licks and then turning them into your own composing licks. Literally, though, I did not invent anything new. I just borrowed techniques that they used that I've studied and rewrote them. That's all really composing really is, is rewriting what's already been done. Think about this for a moment. If you if they say that, well, we're going to, this, this song is a standard, this song we're talking about, my favorite blues song is a standard 12-bar blues. Standard. Done before. Standard. Simple things like 1, 4, 5 in major or minor or 1, uh, four, two, five, and major and minor, all standard things you would normally reuse to create music. Now, this is going to also include uh, certain types of melodic licks that you know. So I bring up the concerto thing because we're going to use E harmonic minor, and I'm going to do something like this. Alternate between these two uh, inversions, outlines of the E minor chord. Doing something like this, okay? A lick I already know, so we're going to alter just slight a bit. And we may alternate between the that and the dominant. That's very common in that time period. So let's create our new lick. Dominant. Okay. Well, it needs work, but just one five, one five. So instead, I might use a standard pattern like this. Following it up by the first pattern. And everybody knows this little lick. And we're still outlining that E minor chord. So when I get to the dominant chord, I'm going to find a way to fit that pattern in. Right there, okay? Because of that seventh that it allows us. So. I could either use that one pattern in there or only use it once on the dominant. That's totally up to the person. So I'm just showing you that you could just that pattern once here. So what I'll do is just record a version of this in with, with the other pattern continuously falling. So. We're going to take this concerto sounding like riff and use it for a completely different reason to produce like a film scoreish effect with like a, a celeste like this using chromatic medians very typical and we'll create something like that where it's going to be much slower and that is virtuosic so so using the same exact aspects of that concerto sounding like lick we have something completely different maybe going from that C minor to a D flat 6 kind of sound very common Hollywood kind of uh, moves to have a little mysterious Celeste part now played into the sequencer So we created something completely different using that same concerto lick, kind of varied a little bit. So let's go ahead and create a theme with this. We're going to use that. Actually, let's move this to F minor. Okay, we'll start with that. And then we'll go to B major. Tritone move, typical F minor and then to G dominant 7th and maybe to C. So we have a chord sequence to work with. So I don't really want to do it like just straight stiff. Uh, 
like this exactly like before. I want, maybe I want to do it with a little bit of swing triplets. Something like this. A um, little bit of variation of the same exact part. Move or lick, whatever you want to call it. Go to the B, Lydian maybe. Maybe end the phrase on that B note. Back to the F minor. Echo the same part on that G dominant to the implied C chord. So now we have a little Celeste theme we created from that concerto lick. So now we're a very far cry from this that we originally stole the lick from. We stole it from ourselves. Again, I'm using the term lick because I think most people can understand this and relate to that concept of, you know, how one lick becomes another lick if you combine it with another lick or variate it slightly, it becomes a new lick. That's why I'm using that term. So sometimes you just think of writing as like variations on licks, but consider them composing licks. They may have been things you've already done in the past. Now you're kind of rewriting something you already know. Which brings me to a good point. One of the best ways to learn how to create is actually take something somebody else has already written and rewrite it.